Hi, this is Sander de Recht for Action VFX. Today I'm going to show you how to create this shot of meteors impacting a desert inside of Blackmagic Design's Fusion Studio. I'm going to show how to set up a 3D tracker and line up the stock footage elements to that 3D scene and composite them all together. Now, to create these meteor elements, you could follow the excellent tutorial Zach created for After Effects, or you could go to actionvfx.com and download a couple of these great new meteor assets. Since Action VFX provides high quality VFX stock footage and has a fast and diverse library of VFX assets, I'm going to go for that option and apply the true and tried here's one I prepared earlier method and take advantage of these stunning looking meteors. By the way, all of these assets are now available at a discount for the Black Friday sale that runs from November 22nd to November 25th. The first thing I'm going to do is set a stage for our meteors. When scrolling through the shot, I notice that I like the way the camera move gets more dramatic towards the end of the shot, so I'm going to use the last 10 seconds of the footage. The first meteor will strike at about frame 60. Then the camera tilts up a little, as if it's filming something up in the sky, so we're going to add a faraway meteor. Then, as the camera tilts down again, we'll add another meteor impact. And we will use the tracking data to help us with masking out the rocks, because the meteor will land right here, behind the rocks. Now that I've decided what part of the shot to use, I'm going to 3D track the shot. For this shot, Fusion's built-in tracker will work nicely. Add the tracker, go to Tools, Tracking, Camera Tracker. The default settings will give us enough points to work with, so let's track the shot. As you can see, we have lots of points that we can use. I'll let Fusion solve the shot. This has taken less than 10 seconds. Pretty good if you ask me. There, the solver error is only 0.2705. So that's pretty good, and it will work for this shot. Since the main impact will be down on the desert plane, I'd like to set the ground plane in Fusion's 3D world to correspond with the desert. To do this, you can go to Export, 3D Scene Transform, and switch from Aligned to Unaligned. To see what Fusion actually does, behind the scenes you can use the scene output from the camera tracker and feed it into a Merge 3D node. This will show you the current status of the camera track in 3D space. As you can tell, the camera moves from side to side, just as you expect from seeing the footage. Now in the camera tracker, I'll go to Ground Plane Options and select Show in View. Now I will select a bunch of trackers down on the desert floor. Then I use Set from Selection to align the ground plane with the selection. You can see in the 3D view how the ground plane jumps to match our selection. Then I'll select this tracker here, which will be my first impact point. And I'll make that the origin by selecting it and pressing the Set from Selection button. Again, the ground plane lines up to correspond with our selection. Now it's time to set the transform back to aligned and the scene is almost ready to be exported. But there is one thing left to do. If you export the scene now, every single tracker you see in this shot will be exported as well. This will make working in 3D space a little harder. So to make it easier on ourselves in this case, I'll flag only a couple of trackers for export. First I'll go to the Solve tab and select all of them and press clear on the export flag. Then I'll select my first impact tracker and rename it First Impact. I know, I'm so original. Then I'll set the export flag. This is now the only tracker that will be exported later on. For the meteor in the sky, I'll use this tracker on the mountain range and rename it Mountain. I'll set the export flag for that one as well. As for the second impact, I'd like the meteor to hit this spot, right on the rocks. So I'll select it, rename it second impact and flag it for export. Now the scene can be exported. Go to the export tab and press export. As you can see this results in a nice clean 3D environment. I'll make the nulls a little smaller in the point cloud settings and we're good to go. Now it's time to choose our meteors. There are quite a lot of good ones to choose from. For this tutorial we'll be using Meteor Large Side White 2. When importing the ProRes version, it's important to go to the Import tab of the loader and check the Post Multiply by Alpha checkbox. 
when using the EXR versions, remember to convert the color space and gamma from linear to sRGB or Rec. 709 depending on what you're working in. I'll set up the comp with the 2K ProRes version for now to speed up rendering, but at the end of the video I will swap in the 4K EXR files. Because of Fusion's resolution independence, this will work fine. To get this loader into 3D space, I'll add an image plane, and I'll line up the pivot to the front of the meteor at the time of impact. To zero out the position, I'll add the negative value of both the X and Y value to the position of the image plane. This will help to scale the image plane in a predictable manner. Enter an equal to sign in the value field to add an expression to them. Then press the little plus icons on the X and Y value and pickwick them to the X and Y value of the pivot point. Add a minus in front of them and you're good to go. Now comes the fun part, and I've only discovered this myself a couple of weeks ago and it's so useful that I have to share this, which makes sense since this is a tutorial. If you go into the 3D view and right click the no, you get this option, copy first impact's position. If you then right click in the flow view and paste, you will get a 3D transform set to the position data of the no. And since the image plane we've just created is zeroed out, it will instantly align to the impact point. I'll mask out the bottom of the meteor shot, because otherwise the meteor will continue in the shot, even though it has exploded. Because I want to see more of the meteor in the shot, I will trim the start of the element to get a larger smoke plume in the shot. Then I'll adjust the pivot again to line everything up. I think it looks nicer if the meteor impacts from the left side of the frame. I think this will be a nice angle of impact. Now I want to add an explosion to add to the impact of the shot. Since this is a desert setting, I'm going to use this dust explosion from the recently released Dust Explosions Volume 2 collection. The explosions in the first volume were already great, but in Volume 2 a lot of variety was added to the explosions. By using different kinds of dust, it's a lot easier to find an explosion that matches closely with your footage, so you'll need to use a less aggressive grade to match your elements. I want the start of the explosion to line up with the impact of the asteroid, so I'll set the global in point to 60, and I'll come into the explosion a little later, so I trim off a couple of frames from the start of the explosion as well. The dust explosion also needs to be on an image plane, but to save some time on setting up expressions for the pivot, I'll copy and paste the media image plane and adjust the settings there. One important thing to remember when dealing with semi-transparent images is to make sure that in the 3D renderer you go to controls and make sure that the transparency is set to sorted accurate. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more tutorials like this one. Now it's time to place the dust explosion into the scene. One way to do this is by copy pasting the first impact 3D transform and connect the impact to it. This will work fine, but when you're building up something in 3D space, like an explosion in this case that consists of multiple elements, you can also take advantage of Fusion's ability to build hierarchies straight into the 3D world. What I mean by this is that you can combine all the elements of your explosion into a separate 3D merge. This will turn them effectively into one object, and then you can feed the result of that 3D merge into the null or 3D transform of your choosing. So in this case, I'll add a 3D merge after the meteor image, and feed the dust explosion into it as well. Now I can use the Z offset in the explosion transform settings to put the dust either in front or at the back of the meteor. I mask out the ground that's in the footage of the dust explosion. By default, every polyline mask in Fusion is animated. So right click here to turn off animation. This will prevent you from animating your mask by mistake. Because the explosion is so big, I want to slow it down to give it more mass. When I go for the final render, I'll use an optical flow node and send the interpolation mode to flow, uh, which will make the slow motion more fluid. But for now, I will use a time speed tool with an interpolation mode set to nearest, to make the composition workable. One thing I will also do is animate the scale of the dust explosion from 1 to about 2 over the course of the shot to make it even more, well, explosive. There are a couple of approaches for matching different elements together. You can do a quick comp first to determine the timing, but in this case I like to give each element a quick grade to see if they'll work together. 
To match the dust explosion, I use a brightness contrast tool, because in this case the color of the dust explosion goes really well with the plate by default. In this case, all I do is adjust the saturation a little bit. Now it's time to add even more debris from the impact to the shot. I use this shot from the Exploding Debris Volume 2 collection and flip it to make the debris fly in the right direction for the shot. Adjust the pivot, the scale and the Z position in 3D space and put the debris in front of the dust wave and the impact of the meteor. To color correct the shot, I'll use a color curves node and adjust it like this. I also adjust the opacity of the layer to about 0.795. Now I will add the dust waves. These come both in EXR and ProRes versions, but for this tutorial I will stick to the ProRes ones. Dealing with EXRs inside the Fusion is a bit more complicated than it is in After Effects or Nuke, so I will expand on this in another upcoming tutorial. This looks pretty great, but the dust waves are a little flat compared to the big explosion. There's also no interaction yet between the explosions and the dust waves. With lighting like this and a cloud of this size, the explosion will also cast a shadow on the dust waves themselves. I want the shadow to influence both the back and front elements, so I'll add two brightness contrast tools. One original and one that I copy and then paste as an instance. This will link all parameters between the two. I'll set the gain to 0.5 to start with. Now I can use a mask to control the shadow of both of the elements. I start out small and then have the shadow grow and cover up most of the dust. There, that's much better. Now to emphasize the impact even further, I want to add a shockwave traveling across the desert floor. I'll add a background tool to the comp and set it to 2000 by 2000 pixels. Then I will use two animated ellipse masks to create the shockwave. The first ellipse will expand quickly and then slow down over a range of 30 frames. I'll give it a nice soft border and then use the spline editor to shape the curve of the animation. I'll copy paste this mask, change the soft edge a little bit and then make its final size a tad smaller. I feed this background into a shape 3D node set to plane and then copy paste the first impact null transform 3D node to position it at the same point in 3D space at the meteor. But, and this is important, I need to have the shockwave as a separate element, so I can comp it separately from the explosion. Now here's where Fusion being a node-based compositor really shines. I can copy paste the merge 3D and the renderer 3D and paste them right here. Then I can just use the same camera node to drive the second renderer. Now I can merge that on top of the background image with screen and then the output of the original render 3D gets merged on top of that and you get this great looking result. I'll leave this impact like this for now. We'll change over to the second one. Most of the steps are pretty similar as with the first impact, so I'll be going through those a little quicker. I'm sure you remember the tracker called Second Impact. I'll go through the scene and find it. Right click, copy position and paste to create a transform 3D slash null. I'll reuse the combined explosion 3D merge by copy pasting that. I'll reuse the image plane with all the connected settings for pivot, scale and position but I'll feed a different dust explosion. For this nice close-up one, I'll be using an asset from another set of footage Action VFX just released called, very practically, Dust Explosions Close. These are shot in a way that sometimes the smoke and dust leaves the frame, so you can't put it in the back of your scene, because then the seams of the image will show. No, these are meant to be used up close. I've selected Dust Explosion Close 31 for this shot. I'll feed it into the image plane, Adjust the pivot to make the explosion line up with the pivot and I'll mask out the ground to get a nice clean explosion. I'll trim off the first 5 frames to make the explosion start out with a bang. To make the direction of the explosion match the impact of the meteor, I'll flip the image by scaling it on the negative x-axis. I will adjust the general saturation first and then use a color gain to make the dust match better with the footage we have. Be sure to always check the predefined post multiply button when you're working with elements that include alpha channels. I will add some additional debris to this shot as well. This one is side 5 from Exploding Debris Volume 2. I'll match the color of the debris to that of the explosion using the same curves from before as a starting point. Then another brightness contrast tool to finesse the debris in there.
I'll set it up just like the explosion and then move it slightly behind the explosion so that the dust cloud will cover the layer of debris that's landing on the floor. Now the explosion is nicely filled out to the right of the frame, emphasizing the impact of the meteor. Which I haven't put in there yet, I know, I know, I know, but I'll get to that soon enough. Now this impact also needs some large scale dust waves. I've used dust wave 1 for this one. The steps are mostly the same as before. Using the separate back and front layers to tuck the explosion in between the dust waves, I color correct the elements to fit into the shot. Then I add some extra shadowing using two brightness contrast tools and of course tie them all together in the foreground explosion merge 3D node connected to the second impact node. Since this impact is a lot closer to the camera than the first one, I also wanted to add a little more fine detail, similar to the shockwave of the first. I won't go through all the steps, but I've used this shot from Dustwave Volume 2 and used the luminance to drive a bitmap mask on the fast noise tool that let me map this gradient color to the luminance value of the element. Then I added some slightly seething fractal noise to this to make the cloud more alive, and then I used the modified alpha channel of the luma keyer to cut out the cloud. Then I color corrected and animated it growing towards the camera quickly. Then I made the 2D composite follow the motion of the shot by creating a so-called locator in the position of the second impact node. The locator converts the image projected 3D position to 2D coordinates that are available to the 2D tools inside of Fusion. This way the 2D transform node can be visually connected to the projected position of the second impact node. This way the 2D element lines up nicely with the 3D rendered explosions. Now there's just one thing that stands out. The place where the explosion takes place is technically partially obscured by this foreground rock over here, while all the elements are rendered on top of it. To remedy this, I'll merge a part of the foreground back on top of the composite so that the first rock covers the explosion and then gets engulfed in the large scale dust wave. I will use the information from the locator to drive the basic position of this polygon mask, making the masking process a lot easier. Of course, this explosion needs its own meteor too. I repeat the same steps as before. Find a nice meteor, put it on an image plane, align the pivot to the point of impact, position the layer at that point of impact, and then rotate and scale to make the impact as eventful as possible. There. Now to fill the time between the first and the second impact, I'll put this shot of a splitting meteor somewhere in the middle where the camera tilts up. I'll use the mountains tracker to create a transform 3D at this position and then move the footage way back and scale it up to make it work. A nice color correction of the element and it fits right into the scene. Look at that. Well, we're almost done. To put the final touches on the meteors, I swapped the ProRes version for the EXR files and then used the embedded extra render passes to make sure the top of the smoke trail gets color corrected to make it look as though it's partially lit by the sky. I used the combined emission pass to make sure that the tip of the comet is nice and bright because of the EXR's possibility to store color values outside of the regular old color ranges. I've also added a shockwave to the second impact similar to the one on the first and a little bit of interactive lighting on the desert floor just before the meteor's impact. I created a reflection layer for the first meteor by rendering out another copy of the scene, but with the camera scaled minus on the Y axis. I masked out the water by using a chroma keyer to create a matte and then merge the reflection into the shot. So that's it. In this video I showed you how to use the stock footage elements of Action VFX to create this action packed shot. All of the assets used in this video are available at actionvfx.com and currently 55% off thanks to the Black Friday sale that ends November 25th. You can also get double the monthly credits on all annual subscription plans during this time. For more details check out the description. I hope this tutorial was useful. If you have any further questions be sure to leave them in the comments down below so we can provide you with the tutorials you need. For now this was Sander Recht for Action VFX. Bye bye.